It's April 9th, 2011. Episode 42, Tech Weekly. Yeah, you know, Jeff, today on Tech Weekly, we're going to talk about a Seattle beer vendor who's using Twitter to Twitter. bring his customers beer in Safeco Field. That's I'm going to use that one. And then we're also going to talk about why Nokia sucks at Photoshop. Photoshop Phil. Uh, then we got another one here. We got YouTube rolling out, live streaming. You know, interesting story there. And then finally, two bookmarks and one of them that we tried out. We're going to call this the group texting. Yes. You gotta put or here. grexting. I just made that up. <laughs> All this week and more. On Tech Weekly. Uh-huh, you stopped me with none, huh? <laughs> we not more. <laughs> sick him on a chicken, sick him on a chicken, sick him on a chicken and watch them feathers fly. Sick him on a chicken. Sick Hello, welcome chicken. into Tech Weekly episode 42. I'm Nick Jones. I'm Jake Rudders. And I'm not quite sure why we're playing this, but you know, Jake, you've been in a where we've been right. playing whatever it comes up. What did we actually play? What did we sick play? Sick him on a chicken. Sick him on a chicken. Slide to get to yeah. that. Sick him on a chicken and watch them. And that fly. is Sick him on a Chicken by the Zach Brown Band. It's pretty awesome. So, Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm okay. Thanks for asking. You're okay? Just okay? But I'm kind of like quiet. You're kind of quiet now? Are you telling me you're going to be quiet? No, um, I'm just talking into oh, the geez. microphone and it's not very loud. Hello, hello. Testing, one, two, three. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I, I don't know, whatever. It's okay. Yeah. So, anyway, we've been playing with our new mixer today. And then we also failed to install a graphics card because we didn't have the SLI. Um, the, the little power, the six-pin power connector in the back yeah, of the But thing. that's easy to fix. We just don't have it right now. I have it at my house because okay. I didn't bring it because I'm retarded. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of news stories this week, and we actually Oh, yeah, played. that's right. Uh, sorry. Yeah, okay, go ahead. What happened? Oh, I forgot. Sorry. What? Nothing. Okay. Um, we got a lot of news stories this week. Um, Jet, we actually played with one of the bookmarks that I uh, bookmarked last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's start out with our first news story here, and I thought this was kind of interesting. I saw it on Mike and Mike in the morning, and I don't have the... Uh, Mike and Mike and Mike. Let's pretend that we're all ready and stuff. But um, this is a story. This guy, this he's a beer vendor. This gadget guru. Wait, never mind. He's a beer vendor. See if... A Twitter beer vendor? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there oh, we sorry, go. Sorry, I'm not even working these controls today, am I? So um, this is from the Chicago Tribune, and it's a, uh, it's a beer vendor. And he does this on the side, and he's one of those guys, you know, he's... You know, Jeff, uh, a lot lately, and I wrote a blog post about this, we've seen a lot of different people migrating to Twitter. And, you know, a year or two ago, like you said when you went to um, CES a couple of years ago and they had their little tweet off, what did they, it, I think it was actually Foursquare check-ins or whatever you could do. There was like nobody on Foursquare. You, I mean, you essentially, it's pretty easy to win the prize, right? Oh, oh yeah, two years ago? Yeah, um, not, not this year. Oh, sorry. I'm like, why haven't you switched back to us yet? I'm like sitting there on the thing. Okay, I'll take this off since we're not going to use those today. Um, hey, guys. How's it going? Um, yeah, like, I remember seeing... Well, I didn't know about Foursquare. Apparently, I wasn't cool enough back then. Um, it was like, check it on Foursquare. And I was like, what? And, and it said, at Foursquare. And I knew that was some kind of like Twitter thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I put, at Foursquare. I was like, I'm at CES... And it was like, huh? It was confusing. But, but yeah, we figured it out. Yeah, you know, this is one of those things, but he's a Seattle Mariners beer vendor. And uh, he's come a long way to get beer to his customers faster. And, uh, you know, he was on Twitter one day, and he embraced the fact that he could do uh, contact anyone instantly on Twitter. You know, so even if they don't follow him, they can still contact you. It's not like Facebook where it's a one-to-one -one contact where only if you allow me to come into your stream can I contact yeah, if, you. If you know their at thing, they can be like, boom, yeah. hey, what's up? So uh, this is a quote. barge on them. His name is Kev Kevin Zelko, 
And he said, since the beginning of beer vendors, we've been walking up and down the aisles seeing who wants beer. A teacher a day and a... Oh, a teacher by day and a beer vendor for five years by night told CNBC, I'm going to change that. So, you know, you've been to some kind of, you know, some kind of sporting event where they, you know, beer vendors, hot they walk beer, around. Get your hot yeah. beer. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's what they do. They walk up and down the aisles. It's really tiresome. It, I mean, you know, you have to pass it down the aisle and everything. But now. People are drinking it as they pass it. And you're yeah. like, oh, you stupid monkeys. Um, but it's pretty cool. And, um. You know, I just thought it was pretty cool because some uh, an average guy, he's a kind of weird that he's a, a beer vendor by yeah. night. But he's like some old man. Teacher. He's like, hey, but he's what's, a school this, t- what's this Twitter thing? My my grandson told me about it, and I just want to sell my beer. So here's a Twitter. Here's his Twitter account. It's ms beer vendor, and, and he's even got a custom background and everything. Yep. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, that's pretty awesome. Miss beer vendor. Yeah, that. Oh, sorry, smoothie. That's what you do. You tweet him your seat number in your section, and um, he brings it to you. And that way, he can crowdsource. Like, I don't know. You think he's just like giving up on? Is he just not going to ser- uh, sell beer to anyone who's not on Twitter now? Or well, I think he figures that's a guaranteed sell. He doesn't have to go True. run up and down the aisles going, "Get your beer, get your beer, and your old peanuts." And then he's like, "Hey, I'll just sit here in the bathroom." I don't know. <laughs> On my Twitter, and we're good to go. Yes. You know what you should do? What should we do? It, it, it'd be really bad, but people could take advantage of this. Just big bad. time. Hey, I'm in seat B13. Oh. Hey, I'm in seat 2839. Uh, and then he's like running around with all these beers, and you're like, Haha, we're not even there. Yeah. You know, Smoothie, Smoothie's saying, uh, so you have to follow him to get beer. Not really, because... No, you just at reply. Yeah. Or you just at him. And I guess then, you would. It's kind of weird because you'd have to know about him. But yeah, I, I'm you'd have guessing. To know about it, but you don't have to like sit there and watch everybody that like. He's like, I'm coming to get you, kids. Because he's smoothie. Um, like Gary Vaynerchuk doesn't follow me, or Michael Vick doesn't follow me, but I can talk to him and he can talk back to me. Is because you know a mention. That's kind of one of the things with spam is because no matter if they know you or not, they can just at reply you and it shows up in your stream, so you'll automatically see it. Um, but here you wouldn't have to. <laughs> Call us saying take the beer and run, but you don't have to follow him. It's just, but I'm guessing that most of the people. I'm in the bathroom. Him. I need a beer. Yeah, exactly. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, he's got 1,200 followers. Nice. So, so 1,200 people like to. Uh... That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you just tweet, like we said, uh, seat number and section. Oh, and he's um he's in sections 105 to 112 tonight. 120. Oh yeah. Area 51. I mean, I thought that was pretty interesting. I like seeing things like that where people, you know, are using Twitter for their everyday lives and not just on the internet, you know? Yeah, I thought about making my MakerBot Twitter account, but then it'd just be about how it doesn't work. <laughs> like, people have done that, like the MakerBot number, and then they put their number. Yeah. I'm just thinking about different Twitter accounts for different things, like, um, what was it, the uh, thing you could buy from ThinkGeek that was the, uh, it's like oh, a the little... scale? It's, right. No, it's a little leaf. It's looking, uh, it's an Arduino that's like in a leaf form. Yeah. And uh, you plug it two probes into your like plant, and oh, uh, I've seen plug those. it into yeah. like you wi- like hook it up to your Wi-Fi or plug it yeah. into your network. They have one for your dog too, and if it if it notices it's doing a lot of like motion, it has like a little motion sensor on it. So if it knows it's walking a lot, it's like yeah, I just went out and went to the bathroom or something. And then like one of them's like. If it didn't move very much that day, it's just like been sleeping in today or something. And it's got like a hundred generated tweets. Where it's not custom ones. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, this is an interesting story here on Mashable, and you know everybody's picked this up, but this just broke yesterday that YouTube is gonna roll Whoa. out oh, live sorry. streaming <laughs> <quick>. to select partners. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, Jet, we've seen this before, and we've actually oh, yeah, talked sorry. about how awesome it would be to have <laughs> to have YouTube. <laughs> We've talked about how awesome it would be to be able to stream on YouTube because, you know, YouTube is really the biggest community on the internet for online video. I mean, there's a couple other places, but if you're going to do online video, I would say you have to be on YouTube. Um, and they've got their own, they, it's kind of weird how they do it. So I've seen, you know, they've talked, they're talking about here, they did the U.S. president election. Um, they've done some other things as well. Um, but like, They've already rolled it out, and some people were actually streaming last night, like is JR Sports. Is they on their own backbone? Yep. Like, 
you can't even tell. It even looks like a YouTube player, but instead of having like the standard controls, it has live streaming controls. So it has like it still has a full screen, but also you can. Um, it's weird. It's hard to say. They've also done like the YouTube orchestra for a couple years, live orchestra or something. It's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Smoothie saying he saw the IGN stream, and then also Machinima is going to start. They've been doing live stream for a while, but they're rolling it out to almost every uh, partner now in the coming weeks. And it's kind of weird how they do the chat room because it actually looks like a comment section, but it's live rolling. You know, they introduced the live comments because, like, if you're watching a Shaytard video or a CTFXC yeah. video, it's you like, can sit there. <laughs> yeah. And, I, you and you're know. Like, how are these many people commenting right now? Yeah. But they are. I mean, they yeah. are. Unless they're just, like, slowly delaying the comments, True. which I comment and I never see mine, like, pop up in there, so I don't know. Yeah, it does. It's really saying it looks weird on YouTube because you're not. You're not used to seeing it, you know. If I'm if I'm looking for somebody to stream, and I'm looking at Justin TV, you stream live stream, whatever. You know, we saw Facebook do this because they partnered with live stream, and now you can actually live stream on your Facebook account yeah. through live stream, which is pretty cool. And everybody's like, "What's this? What's this pre-recorded video?" I'd be like, nah, it's not pre-recorded. It's live, uh, live, baby, all the time." So yeah. So our next story is from CNET, their business tech news uh, department. This is some pretty staggering numbers here. HTC's profits tripled this year on a huge smartphone demand. And, you know, this was really... I mean, they came out with... Late in the year, they didn't make a huge storm. Actually, this year, you know, some of their bigger phones come out. The Inspire 4G and then also the Thunderbolt. And, you know, they went almost six months without releasing, like, a major phone. Like, they didn't have... It wasn't like, you know, first quarter we had a big phone, second quarter we had a big phone. Like, this is... I mean, they're still selling Evos. I mean, I went in Best Buy yesterday, and I saw somebody buying an Evo, and it's almost, what, six or eight months old by now. Well, they're, they're just slow. Well, true. Adopters. I know, but, but yeah, they're yeah. still getting that profit. They're like, hey, we'll, 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 we'll sell you an Evo, whatever. I don't care, whatever. Yeah. They got so, their face um, like this. Their revenue was $104.2 billion, and uh, a gain of almost... 175% from the prior year and a leap over of $95 billion forecast. $100 billion. So, I mean, they were, what, almost, almost nine, almost $10 billion, or no, $10 million over uh, what they, the analysts actually predicted. And most of the time, you know, if you're going to succeed on Wall Street, that's what you're going to want to, you know, you want to be over the predictions, which is kind of hard to do because next year, you know, they'll probably predict like 200 billion dollars or something and then they'll only bring in like 130 or something and everything will be messed up anyway yeah i'm a big fan of my uh inspire 4g i think you like your uh your evo, oh, pretty. My evo. yeah yeah I, I could i could stand to um you know not be as thick for the uh extended battery but you know what you gonna do about it yeah so uh and I would say, you know, HTC was really one of the first, not the first, but one of the first to make the 4.3-inch touchscreen big. Like, you know, well, that sounded <laughs> kind of weird, but, like, uh, they made big They actually share. defied the physics and made 4.3 inches actually big. bigger. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. It's pretty cool, though. I'm, you know, us being big fans of HTC, I like, I like to see that. So our next story here, I thought this was kind of interesting, and I knew it would happen because, you know, Jacob, uh, the iPad 2 has these new little connector things on it that they use for the smart cover. Mm -hmm. It's got little hinges on the side, and it's not really apparent when you're holding the iPad 2, but, you know, once you stick it on, once you obviously know that that's how it works. But, you know, I would have to admit, the smart cover is pretty cool. So you throw the smart cover on there, and it uh, senses that it's on there, and it automatically puts the display to sleep. And when you pull it up, it comes back on. I think it's a pretty cool device. I'm not sure if I'd pay 30 bucks for it, but the first um, of the fakes came out this week, and mm -hmm. I knew it would take a little while because you know they gotta they gotta figure out how to do that hinge. It's not just like making a you know an i uh, the same exact cover but with a Apple logo or like a Pear logo or something you know something completely different. But this one's kind of weird, and I don't really know how they're I don't know how they do this. I mean, do you even know how they would, like, figure out how to sense that it's closed? I think they do it somehow through... No, it's a magnet on there, oh, it and is? there's a read switch on the actual iPad. Oh, okay. All it does is just close a switch with a magnet. Yeah. So, yeah. But I would make sure, you know, if you're going to order one of these, make sure to order it from 
Apple or some trusted source that you know they're not going to be like selling something from China. So what is it done wrong about? It's self <laughs> Wait, hold on. Um, Just hit play on the video. Go scroll down and hit play. Got to scroll down. It's not even there. Oh, there it is. Is Vimeo going to give us problems? You know what? Sounds good. You know that has to be a good cover. that's pretty cool um and you gotta watch out for stuff like that because honestly you can't tell the difference on how they look because i mean that's a pretty duplicable duplic duplicatable duplicatable sure there was a, um some, 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 <laughs> duplicable <laughs> i can't even say it. anyway duplicatable yeah it's easy to make the same thing you know make it look like that but of course it won't work like it and it did work there for a little while i guess they built the magnet in correctly or whatever but of course it just you know fell apart I thought that was pretty funny. So, Jeff, I, we didn't actually get to talk about this, but Amazon launched a... Um, oh, I thought that was the the Burger King guy. Oh, it kind of does look like him. What should I say? Uh, <laughs> the Burger King guy. <laughs> Without the hat on. It does actually look like him. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, since we didn't do a Tech Weekly last week, we missed the fact that Amazon oh, yeah, launched... Right. We didn't do that, did we? No. They launched a, uh, a cloud music storage thing that you can do and it's called like cloud Dri it's kind of like microsoft cloud drive or whatever they call that you you get 5 gigabytes free and you can store anything but they with the the amazon mp3 um application on iphone and android you can actually stream directly to your iphone from their servers and then also and the best part is it, it can be any music so it doesn't matter where you got it from it doesn't matter if you got it from um well i don't know if it'll work with itunes cuz they put all, all the copyright protection in there I thought that was pretty cool because, you know, Amazon puts no DRM on their MP3s. That's, That's kind of hard nice. to believe. Yeah. I mean, I'm always pro no DRM because, you know, if you don't, in iTunes, essentially they use like their proprietary AAC or whatever. It's it's like some weird well, thing. Well, see, the way I always looked at it was if you bought that, you own it now, right? Right. So yeah, you should be able to do whatever you feel like with it because yeah. you own it. Use it in a video. It's you not know. like you're renting anything. It's not like you're, yeah. you know. I mean, like I could, if I go buy a car and then they put car. something in there to where only, you know, like. It only goes like 50 miles an hour or something. Yeah, or, or something stupid to where, oh, we're going to restrict you on your usage of this thing. I don't know. It's yeah. weird. And I usually don't like. Uh, covering like this kind of strikes me as rumor, you know, rumor mill sorta. Of, but um, TechCrunch has been looking at what Google's re or Google's recent activity in buying domains. You know that Google's got thousands, of, even you know, hundreds of I thousands. I mean, they have their domains. own like. They probably have their own domain register. You know, yeah, registrar. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't make their own domain. Yeah. Uh, why would they? Why would they buy these? To, you know. Yeah. 
They registered, um, this is kind of interesting, they registered domains having to do with lightning, thunder, and nebula, which is Latin for cloud. And um, there's, also, there's also a lot of music, uh, Google Bass, Google Alto, Google Soprano, Google Nebula.com, Google Lightning, Google I think Thunder. They're just doing that for fun. Google Tenor. <laughs> they're just well, doing that so people be like, oh, what are they doing? Yeah. What are they going to do? Like, and, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have that kind of domain name. Like, they would be like, if they were going to do anything, it'd be like nebula.google.com or, you know. Yeah, I don't think, and if anything, or I think. google.com slash nebula or. Yeah. Like, why would they have a full-on domain name? I don't, I can't even think of a service that actually strays away from, well, actually Google Wave did, but it was, yeah, it's but still like, forwarded to wave.google.com. What happened to Google Wave? True. <laughs> yeah, that was someone, so they, they let their employees get a little too, uh. Yeah. Now, I'm creative. all about being synced with, you know, I love things with Google, because I could see them implementing this just in, like, some Google, or just in the music player with Android or something. Wouldn't that be nice to have, like, you know, you could just store your files up on Google, kind of like, maybe they'd build it into Google Docs or something, kinda and you like, could just... Kind uh, of like GrooveShark. Yeah, sort of like GrooveShark, but, you know, owned but by Google. You, you own, yeah. own the files? True. I thought it was kind of interesting. You could upload MP3s to uh, your Google Docs. Yeah, but it's not like seamless streaming oh, and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. oh. Probably got a hum. You know, you know what, what you can do, though? What? You can um, upload all your stuff to uh, archive.org for free. Yeah. Unlimited. Yeah, archive.org, we're pretty big fans I, of them. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, I think they already got there. They could work on their interface. Yeah. Archive dot that I think they're still rocking the same interface they had in like ninety six oh, or yeah. something. Because they're like, Oh, we're a community based system, we're not gonna ar- update anything because we're all old. Yeah, but I mean community first thing I think about a we're gonna talk about it in an Ubuntu store later, but Well Ubuntu is completely different though, because well, true. you know, they're all like you have a certain people in the archive org community. You don't you know, everybody and their brother can't go in there and be like, Yeah, we just yeah, make the website right. like this. Yeah, you right. got like those choice people that are like we're gonna keep it all lucky. Yeah, I guess you're right, but I'm I'm all for people. Always say you know open source stuff. It's not gonna look as good as an Apple product, or it's not gonna look as good as hey, a Google product. Hey, you get product. enough enough people yeah. in there that that want to do it and that are graphically oriented. Because there's a lot of open source graphically oriented people out there. And I would argue that some of them may be better than some of them that are working hey, for like. You, you can know. make Ubuntu look like ten times bigger than any operating system. Yeah, because you've but you got, have to like actually go out and do it. Yeah, that's the only problem. <laughs> but anyway, this is kind of an interesting story. And I, if if I don't uh, if I'm not mistaken, we've talked about this before. Some company screwing up a uh, I think it was Verizon and they like showed off I don't know what they did but Nokia this is once again another sucks at Photoshop we like these oh gosh and I just look see at this. what happened so they they've got their new Nokia thing oh my god and gosh. for first first off this was actually set to be launched the F1 which is Formula 1 it's an ESPN application I mean okay whatever but first of all there's no Nokia Symbian device that works on AT&T that looks like this first off Look what this is. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at this. Well, if we'll zoom in here. Can you see that user interface there? <laughs> yeah, what does that remind you of? Android. Either? Android? Wait. Look at that top bar. Oh, sorry. That's an Apple yeah. screenshot. It kind of looks like a, um, you know, the, the app looks more like Android. Because you know how on Android a lot of people yeah, design their own UI or something? Yeah, they'll ha- sometimes they'll have the little refresh button or whatever. But look at this. That's this is on their Avi store, which is like their version of the App Store, but that's pretty funny, you know. I mean, Jeff, you're a pretty big. I mean, you do some graphics design on the side and stuff. I mean, if you were working for Nokia, don't you think you would at least put the time in to go grab a little screenshot off your whatever Nokia device? Some guy was like, "Yeah, I got this on my iPhone. I think I'll just take a picture." Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't even cool. using a Symbian device. Um, anyway, I thought that was pretty funny, and that yeah, definitely the, the, deserved it. Their other app is like horrible looking. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I've never used a Symbian. I haven't used a Symbian device in so long. Like I use like the E seventy one or something. That one that was like a kind of like a BlackBerry clone, sort of. I don't know. Anyway, they've they've long and forgot uh, Symbian, but thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, we always like to talk about space exploration because stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. And this is from Engadget and. um... NASA's new Mars rover was spotted. Hovers in mid-air. Nowhere, everywhere it goes. 
Oh, wait, never mind. That's a pretty crazy-looking contraption there. And this was on the, the Ustream broadcast. You know, NASA has their own little t- thing that they call NASA TV. And Which is basically this. their little channel that they do out to, like, over the air. Yeah, it used to, like, you can get it on... Um, if you satellite, have any kind of satellite, yeah. uh, you can just go to it. If you, even if the satellite doesn't work, it's pretty cool though. I mean, just look at this thing. It's got like a. Kind of hard to see. It's got like some dual camera action up there at the yeah, top. Yeah, sadly, um, this is what they have for um, their space exploration that they're not going to do anymore. True. Because apparently NASA has to be sustained by the government to do anything because nobody wants to invest in them. You know, I kind of wish the government, the government, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the, the U.S. government was actually on the verge of shutting down last night because they didn't have a budget for the next fiscal year. They always do this. Yeah. Which but, is not that big of a deal because, you know, they're going to figure out go, a way. Oh, we'll just, we'll just, whatever. We're just taking off day tonight or something. But, um, <laughs> this is, I would, you know, this always gets to me because there's so many people that don't, I, I'm all for, if people need it, you help them. Like if if somebody if somebody is in between jobs, they need to they. I'm all for a government thing for four to you know three or four months to help them in between finding jobs. All right, but for the people who's been on unemployment for ten years or something, and the government's not finding them, can we just like do away with that paycheck and do it? Uh, you know, allot it for NASA because NASA is such a cool project and. You know, well, see, um, you have the conspiracy I, theorists out there. Yeah. That uh, let me let me make a really loud noise with my mic here. Okay. Um, you have the conspiracy theorists out there, which I mean, you know, I could see it coming around a couple times. Yeah. But um, yeah, like, uh, a lot of people say that there's too much radiation out in space, and that's why when you get past the protection of Google's, you know, magnetic whatever yeah um <laughs> the radiation from the sun practically kills you um and i think that's one of the probably i think obama or whoever that ended up making that decision came around was like yeah we see exactly why you guys haven't gone back out in this like actual space not in just a high orbit actual space and we're just going to go ahead and pull the plug on this because we we know that you're not going to be able to come around and you know, so you're really consi- you're really saying it's not budget issue. I think well, it's I think it's someone finally came to the agreement that that it's probably like with the current technology as it is right now, they're not going to be yeah. actually able to leave the um, the orbit of Earth because of all the radiation. Yeah, and we because, yeah. And, th- and that's I mean, so, somebody you know you see in one science. Uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, documentary, where it's like, oh yes, if if the uh, um, if if the uh, the the Earth's magnetic field went away, uh, we would all burn up like a big fireball in the sky, be from the the radiation from the sun. But then, in another one, they're like, oh yeah, we'll just go out here to the. Uh... And I think a lot of our society is is. We've lost appreciation for something like space. Well, see, because there's all these special effects in movies and stuff, and like, and everybody, everybody knows that we we haven't like been you know like that out in space. But but you can easily and they're, they're like, oh yeah, I could see that happening. I mean, they do it on the movies all the time, even yeah. though that's fake. I mean, you should just be able to do it. And Smooth saying, you know, that that's why they need more funding so they can build better technology, which is absolutely yeah. right. But And the the other thing you have to also think about, see, a lot of people don't really actually know that don't or that, not that they don't know, they don't understand a lot of people don't understand how stuff works in space. Um, when you're in an orbit around the Earth, you're just not floating in the sky. You're falling constantly back to Earth. You're in a free fall. That's that's how they stay in the air. But they're high enough that when they fall, the Earth's gravity just pulls them around. Now, their, de- their orbit is slowly decaying no matter what they do. So they have to constantly adjust for that. Right. So that's why but, they, they'll do like, uh, what do they call it, like bursts or whatever. Yeah. Like when they're in that kind of mid-orbit, and then when they get in a high orbit where all the satellites and stuff are, the GPS satellites right. and everything, they're in a thing called geostationary orbit. And what that does is they no longer... They're falling at such a 
low rate. Or... They're they're falling at such a high altitude that they actually um, fall at the same rate that the Earth rotates. So when they get put up and they start to fall, they no longer move in the sky. They they're they're basically synchronized with the fall with the rotation of the Earth. So while they're falling, they're so actually they're, falling. They're really they're they're falling, but they're not actually falling toward. Well. They're they're falling on the curvature of the Earth because the gravity, yeah. as you fall, it pulls you in, and as it pulls you in, you're still you know you're just constantly falling around. So, but people what people don't understand is that when you're falling in space, or orbiting the planet, you're moving at like thousands and thousands of miles per hour. Any f- speck of anything that hits you while you're out there going the opposite direction is, <laughs> destroys you. Yeah. F- like, they've lost complete satellites from a speck of paint. Just a little chip of paint <laughs> off of something. That's crazy. Um, so, that, that's, that's the kind of the thing that you have like to think about. Because what people don't... I don't think people really fully understand because they normally really don't talk about it much is that they're tracking every single object that's orbiting the Earth. From big old fuselage that was jettis- you know, jettisoned off of a thing or an old satellite that doesn't work no more, yeah. um, to a little millimeter wide speck of paint that is floating. They're tracking it all. Because, and I think it, like, what was it, 10 years ago or maybe eight years ago, they were tracking like over 3,500 objects at any given time. And a lot of them they don't really have to track in the sense of they all they got to do is retrack them once they're tra- once they like sense a collision or trajectory change. Yeah. And because you know, you can figure out by the size and mass of everything where it's going to go and everything. And then they know by calculations this is going to crash into this. So I need to look there and then see what happens when that does it and then recalculate. But yeah, that's basically why it's it's too dangerous to go out into space or to leave our atmosphere, I should say. I so. s- I still am. I think many like you and I are still very nostalgic that you know there's still. The I mean, I, I, I would love I would, I would love for us to actually do that stuff, but the way the way I understand it, um, I think I heard somebody say one time that if you were outside of our orbit, completely outside of our orbit, where you're not falling with right. us, you're going around the sun. And look back at Earth, it's like a garbage ball because there's so much crap out there. It's just you don't you don't see it because it's all in a different orbit. Really? But when you look back, I mean it's just like all this crap just I mean not like a yeah. big solid piece of mass, but it's like yeah. tons of things going around the earth. <clears throat> so our next story is it's from TechCrunch, and once again it's like one of those things where it's Kind of reminds me of a... It's a rumor, of course, because they have rumor. Oh, rumor mill. um, It's kind of a weird rumor that... um, Mishandling? The iPad could be... Or Apple could take the iPad out of Best Buy um, stores. And (laughs) this is from a reader who works at Best Buy. They just told him that it was a bit of a misunderstanding between the electronics retailer and Apple. Apparently, Best Buy was holding off selling iPad 2s they had in stock... Um, telling customers there weren't any. In fact, they had just reached their quota of sales because for the day. They were saving them for friends. Yeah. Um, it's not the smartest business decision I've seen. I've seen, but the Apple retail rolls out aren't something to mess with. So this has always surprised me that Apple, Apple is not the company to say, all right, we'll sell in Walmart, we'll sell in Best Buy, we'll sell in Target, even though they sell there now with the iPad. And I think that's one of those things where. The market was demanding it so much, so much that it, there's only like 500 and something Apple stores, and many, you know, a couple of states, they're like Alaska and like Hawaii. I don't even think they have an Apple store, so you know, you're gonna have to get it shipped or whatever. But I could see Apple doing something like this. Well, I think they're just trying to push their weight around. They're like, yeah, we're we're uh, we're trying to sell our product in your store, right? Which you can say no, we don't want it any given time. But we're going to flip the books and make it to where we're pulling our product out of your store because you're like, oh, but we still want it. And I think it's just a um, scare tactic is really all it is. Let me get this straight. Ugh. Um, That's why I don't like the cover rumors. But anyway, um, Jeff, Facebook held a 
uh, little thing this week, a little conference, and they're open sourcing all of their server technologies. Like, so they're putting all their your you like if you wanted to, you could buy the parts and make the same exact server that Facebook has. They open source the any everything from the equipment that they use, so you can get the diagrams readily available online. But you can also um, get the actual in-house developed back-end uh, software that they're using. I mean, you know, they are using like SQL or whatever, you know, something like that, but they also have these little things that they've whipped up with their dev team or whatever. And, I mean, this is pretty cool. I have to admit, I like seeing people go open source. I mean, just, just, pretty. just check out this server room. I mean, it's nothing What compared. we did basically here, uh, we just have a, uh, a blade server running in the back. But um, we took all these acrylic boxes and put them with these cool blue lights. Um, the computer's actually in the middle, but you can't see that. Um, <laughs> that'd be hilarious if that's what it was. No, these aren't computers. These are just boxes with blue lights in them um, that blink every once in a while. The computers are actually inside the uh, that room there. That's just the walls. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Be all that'd late. be awesome. I'm sorry. I was reading this. Um... Their main data center is located in Prineville, Oregon. So if Not anymore. Visit... Beep, beep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You killed everyone. And they've partnered with AMD, <laughs> Dell, HP, and Intel. So pretty much the whole uh, market there, especially for processing, to, uh, you know, develop different open source technologies. I mean, I thought it was pretty cool. I like seeing Facebook do something like this because it's just, you know, cool. <laughs> Um, Jeb, our final news story for the day is, you know, we were just talking about Ubuntu, and the reason I put this in here is not because I'm an, uh, not only an Ubuntu fan, but also... A Linux fanboy? Yeah, I am a Linux fanboy, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> very interesting that <laughs> this is the first app, app store to actually fully app say... Store. Yeah. For Linux? Ubuntu's got their own app store. Dude. Store? Well, yeah, you can buy stuff. What? Um, Open source, it's free, man. Well, there's only about five paid applications, but it's called the oh, Ubuntu sorry. Software Center. <laughs> um, the cool thing is, you can test drive. So, you know, Jeff, um, we've seen it on iPhone. Is how people allow you to test drive applications or use them before you buy is they'll call it the light version. But you still got to download the application, and if you download the paid application after that, you still have two of the same applications on your phone. So, I mean, it's just completely stupid, but. Um, this is going to ship with 11.04, which is coming in 20 days now. Uh, we're 20 days away from the release of 11.04. And in the Ubuntu Software Center, you can now preview applications. They're calling it Test Drive. And it, it what it does, it runs it in a sim, what what I would consider a virtual machine. It's it's their own like little... It's not just like it opens up VirtualBox or whatever. I mean, it's like their own little built... Um, it just runs it off the internet. Yeah. And, I mean... We saw this. You can do this in the Amazon App Store, but you have to be on the the web. You can't do it on your phone, which is kind of stupid. But pretty cool to see somebody like the Ubuntu, some like we were talking about, open source guys who just got together and developed something like this, making something so cool. Yeah, we're gonna make it open source, and then we're gonna sell it to you. Yeah, well, sell it to you for a bunch of money. Sell it to you for a bunch of money. And you know, this is the things that are in there for paid. One of them is something that's not open source, or well, technically, I guess it is open source. But you, it's Windows codecs that aren't readily available through Linux. It's like five bucks or something. And then they've got they've got a couple de uh, development uh, cross platform development applications like uh, what's it called? Uh, Radical Breeze has one that's uh, Illumination Software Creator, which the guys over at Jupiter Broadcasting develop. And I can understand, it's like 40 bucks, but you can develop for iPhone, Android, um, the web, like uh, Ubuntu, Windows, Mac, it, essentially anything, and you don't have to write a line of code. It's totally vi visual. It's like a WYSIWYG type deal. <laughs> you just drag the uh, skibbly do over to the hooky hook and yeah. uh, hit Kampoopaloo. Yeah, that pretty much does it for the news section. We got some pretty cool bookmarks coming up. Um, Riding the horse into town. <laughs> yep. Whoa! So, Jay, I wanted to cover two cool services that I've I've used, and I actually haven't used this first one, so I can't really <sighs> talk about it. But it does the same kind of thing. But it's kind of like the second one that we're going to talk about. 
The first one is Yo Bongo. Yo and Bongo? It's, I would say it's kind of like group te- texting. They're calling it chat, you know, chatting. But It's called a chat room, Nick. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we used to have back in the day. And a lot of people have, have been saying, you know, I kind of wish we could just have IRC. I wish everybody well, I communicated wish I could talk through. to people that are next door to me that I have no idea who they are. Yeah. Yeah, sure, go ahead. But Yo Bongo is a, a service that is only iPhone right now. Um, that's why I haven't used it. But um, you can chat with people. Oh, Nicholas. I didn't do it. I didn't you do kicked, it. You clicked. Oh, did I click? Yeah. You got to um, see my iPhone disgust. <laughs> You can okay, chat with yeah. people nearby and in real time, and you can you can. Um, it it kind of reminds me of color. You know, we talked about color. You just upload a photo, and it shows everybody around you. But the cool thing is, you can chat and make you know everything. But the weird thing is, this is kind of weird. It's kind of crazy. You don't. You can't moderate who's in the chat room. So, so anybody and their brother could bust up in there. Yeah, as long as they're in the Birmingham area, or like let's just say that we were in Birmingham. We could only chat with people in Birmingham. It's kind of weird. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, okay, I like being social on the internet, but you're like, whoa, this is getting like it's way basically too like, social. It's like chat roulette sort of, but without <laughs> webcams, and it's with people around you. Yeah. So you know they're with like in a certain amount of area. So here's a little. We can't scroll down anymore, Dave. Oh my gosh. It was a little jerky and chill. I know, but this is... I don't know what it is. Is that like them doing that themselves? Anyway. I think we get the idea, but you can chat. Like, these are just random people. Like, you're just going to be chatting with completely Oh, how's it going? I'm sitting next people. to you staring at your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pretty mouth. And, I mean, you're going to get some creepers. You're going to yeah, get some... Yeah, you will. There'll yeah. be a constant creeper in Pell. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, you ladies want to hook up tonight? It's going to turn into a uh, hookup line. Yeah. I- I'm going to go ahead and call it right now. Called it. Boom. <laughs> hookup line. It's going to be, they're going to change it, change the way they're going with it. And it's now going to, just sort of like how Chat Roulette was like, oh, it'd be cool to be able to just instantly connect with random yeah. people in the webcam. <laughs> oh my gosh, he yeah. has his stuff out. <laughs> you know, Chat Roulette <laughs> was a pretty cool idea. I'm not going to yeah, lie. And then but... people got out there like, hey, watch this, I can have my stuff out while everybody looks at it. <laughs> That's what's going to happen with this. Uh... I swear. <laughs> people will be like, hey, you guys want to do something? Meet me over in the corner of blah, 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 and we'll uh, see what's going on. <laughs> Or it's going to be a drug dealing thing. Anybody want to buy some weed? I got some weed right here. Anybody want to buy it? Uh, now, this is a lot of these different, you know, group te- texting. That's what I'm calling it. There's now, I like this one terms. because it's not anybody and a brother can get up in yeah. it. Yeah. And you can you can make chat rooms. Like, you can say, you can invite more people. So, what was that service? That, was it Tiny Chat that, we, that you had tried out before on the internet? And yeah. Well, we were trying to see how we could do, like, yeah. webcam things. Yeah. But this is kind of sort of like that. You can invite and people. And this is fast. Yeah, it's really fast. Like, it's just like... I had it open on my um, browser last night on my computer, and I had it on my phone. And I sent him a picture of something random on my desktop. Because you can send pictures. You can send locations. You can, like, tw- uh, when you send a comment or something like I sent my location which is pretty cool yeah and you, you can send your location and then you can actually look at a map of who's involved in it and see where they're at um, like where they've been you know sending things from so like when I sent the picture you know it showed it at my house well in the general vicinity of my house depending on how accurate your GPS is at the given time you hit send Right. sometimes it's like you're in Helena I'm like which is like five, yeah, five miles, miles south right. or something you're like no I'm not but you just didn't let it give enough time but it's pretty cool because, like, I sent a picture, and it came in, like, boom! I mean, like, popped up on the browser as soon as I hit send. Yeah. It's, like, it's instant push stuff. Like, you don't, it doesn't actually go out there and check. Um, it's basically like a little chat program. I mean, you get pushed um, these things, which is kind of cool because you're not like Twitter where you got to go out and check it all the time. And see, look, at, I mean, it's literally texting, but a group, like... Yeah, it's, but it's a lot more involved and Yeah, awesomeness. you can send a lot more things. And the cool thing is, you know, if you group text somebody, it's still like if you have an Android phone, it's going to open up individual conversations with those people. So you're going to have to respond. You can't Yeah, sit. and now, now it's like like when 
you send a group message, a group text message to somebody, one, they all don't know who they're getting sent to. They don't know who's all in the conversation. The people that you sent a group text message to can't reply back to the other people because they don't know who you sent it to. Right. Uh, and it, what, what it, is it Ryan? Ryan always likes to send group text messages. Yeah. Hey, anybody want to blah blah blah? When he says anybody, I know he's not just sending it to me. And uh, and like here's a what is it? Five. There's one um, in a minute. I'll cycle back around. It shows like and it's it's in line, so everything that you type is right there. Yeah. And so you can like there's a thing where he actually sent directions, and you can actually it opens up with Google Maps. Um, it, it's Android and iPhone, which I like, and you know it doesn't discriminate between. You can you know go in between as long as you have an Android or an iPhone. Oh, and uh, Facebook owns it now. Yeah, that was kind of weird. And they were like, "I got to get up on this," which means I, a ton of people are going to start using it now, just because it's a Facebook. It, it's product. it's brand new, but now Facebook will start pushing it on their website. Yeah, and it's like, uh, I kind of hope this is one of those things that Facebook like acquires, but. Does not fully acquire it? Let's, lets them do their thing, yeah. sort of? Like, technically they're owned by Facebook. Like, I don't want still. places. You know, places is like, everybody's like, ah, I'm over here because this is so new and hip and cool. Like, you do realize that checking into things has been here for a while. You know that, um, I, I do like one thing that they did with places is they actually, um, it syncs with Foursquare and Gowalla. So if people open, if you open up your places account, it shows Foursquare, Gowalla, and places check-ins. Which yeah, I, but it, when you check in, it won't say, like, someone else has been here. It just syncs the place if you create it, right? Yeah, true. Like, if I checked in on Foursquare, it's not going to show me checked in on Gowalla or or Facebook. You know that um, Gowalla introduced Foursquare sync? So you can actually check into the, as long as that, as long as the address is How is he checking clear, in so many different places? As long as the um, address is correct, you can actually check in. You can use Foursquare while using Gowalla. You know what I hate? I hate people that don't. Don't take the time when they create a place to create it like accurately, or go right. back later on and fix it after they create it. Yeah. Because then you're like, I can't find it. Where's it at? Yeah. And so then you make a new one, and oh, then now like now and then like someone comes to check in, and they like keep using enough or different. And you're like, what in the world are you doing? Yeah, I do like the fact that Gowal is really good about auto creating places, and they've partnered with like I know that they partner with uh, Best Buy, Walmart, Target. Uh, Whataburger, Whataburger, Dairy Queen. There's a bunch of places. Yeah, pretty much. With. If you check into somewhere and they have a their own custom icon, that means that they they were partnered with them. And the cool thing is, they assure that those are going to be the right location. So you're always going to find those, which is pretty cool. Yeah, like, which Whataburger worked out relatively well. And they, they need like Shell and people to get online because like I'll go and check in at a Shell gas station and like there's like 50 of them for one place. Yeah. I'm like, well, who keeps making it? It's like, did, does somebody not understand that they don't I think have to somebody just creating? makes a new one every time like, they check oh, in. I'll, I'll check in. Let me make a new one. Uh, I'm going to check in again. Let me make a new one. Man, this is really annoying. Let me check in again. I'll make a new one. And then it's like they have their like GPS turned off, and it's like yeah. 50 miles away, and you're like, what are you doing? And I forgot to mention, that was, is it Beluga? Is that how you say it? Beluga, like the well. Yeah. Beluga. And Jacob and I played it with it last night. It was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And, like, my phone was dying, and it kept on dying, and kept on dying, and it never died, which was kind of impressive, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think, I don't know how they were doing it. They must compress that um, picture pretty well. Well, that picture gets uploaded instantly. Yeah, it's kind of Like, you hit send, and it pops up on the other, and then it's like, I guess they're doing their own hosting. I would or have, they're using yeah. Facebook now, maybe, to host it. I wouldn't think they've made the transition, because they just got acquired, like, last week. But. Because, um... Like it doesn't open up in like pick please or no, it's just anything like that. In there. It's it's just in line. That's right something there. I like. I kind of wish that Twitter would make their or like buy Y Frog or pick please or something. Yeah. Well, they won't buy Y Frog. Well, I know. Yeah, but it would still be kind of cool, you know, just to have something. It doesn't even open up and it just is on Twitter, you know. Yeah, you don't have to like go to Outsource another website it, yeah. to see all your pictures. You know, it's like yeah. here it is. Yeah. And he, and um, what was it? I was looking at it was. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. Jay was playing with his monster. Did you show that off in the show, or was it just the pre-show? Um, I think it might have been just the pre-show. But if we go to the uh, crappy Zoom cam... <laughs> that seems to be out of line today or something. You're out of line! Yeah. No, the can's just so massively tall that you can't see the top sure. of it. And then it's got one of those cool, like, spout cans. It's not like just a... <laughs> 
It's weird. I can fill it up with oil afterwards <laughs> and use it for my car. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, the, I like the, I like this one. I wish Costco would sell these Instead in bulk packs because ones. they're the low carb, you know, low sugar. Oh, and they all don't that have junk. the low carbs. No, really. So they just got the full the out only low monster. the sugar free or low sugar energy drinks that they have is, is the one. diet um the sh- the sugar free. Uh, Red Bull. Mm. And they're the little tiny ones. They're yeah, not they're even like, the big ones. I'm like, yeah. I'd drink all of those in one day, which would probably be really bad for me. Yeah. You know, guys, we're um, we're experimenting with some new things. We just got our yeah. mixture in. Jake's uh, going to be looking at experiment some... Experiment with some energy drinks. Oh. <laughs> um, see what happens when you mix them with gasoline. No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. Oh, my gosh. Don't um, ever drink gasoline, kids. We've got some interesting stuff coming up. I'm just saying... I'm just saying too. And then also, we're gonna be the bottle's moving real fast. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Fall. Oh. I was waiting for it to be like. There we go. I don't know if I picked that up, but anyway. Yeah, I gotta pick that um, up. Jacob's going I want to, to use that again. That's pretty nice. Jacob's going to um, look at some different cameras, and we're also gonna mess around with After Effects. So we oh. don't. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> we don't want to like change the show up that much but we're it's gonna be like more i don't know if yeah that's what that's how that's what it's it. gonna be like yeah you're gonna be like be like and now it's time for bob Vila's home again and you're like wah, 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 and it's like wah, 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 and you're like oh what's going on i don't know we'll have yeah. some like crazy transitions yeah no. it's gonna be awesome anyway guys you can follow jacob on twitter is it this one oh, twitter.com gosh. Slash freaking huge, F R E A K I N H U G E. You can also check him out on YouTube, youtube.com slash freaking huge as well. Um, oh, and by the way, by the way, uh, Twidroid added a um, um, shared a post this to Facebook button, oh. but it doesn't work yet. <laughs> Way to go, Twidroid. Uh-huh. Add that button and make sure it doesn't I work. I just first. updated last night. Uh, I'll have I to check it out. Um, and you can also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash that Nick Jones. Twitter.com slash PBCastTV, PBCastTV.com. That's where you can find all of our videos, all everything. You know, Twitter is the best way to follow us, see when we're going live. Um, yeah, pretty awesome. Live.PBCastTV.com. We do this show about, uh, I don't know, I'd say 11, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time at Live.PBCastTV.com. So, guys, thanks for joining us. And until next time, I'm Nick Jones. Oh, I'm Jacob Roberts. <laughs> and this is Tech Weekly. See What's you guys. up, dudes? Peace, peace. Wait, wait. Peace, peace.